in class we did it for carbon. Carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. That's its electron configuration. So we're only going to write down the 2s and the 2p because we're not going to deal with core electrons. And the 1s2, those are both core electrons. So it's 2s2, 2p2. Okay, so there's its electron configuration, but written in the orbital energy line diagram fashion. This, and other atoms do this too, and I'll show you an example, hybridizes in three possible ways, depending on what's going on. It can hybridize, so we're going to draw three diagrams right here. It can hybridize with the S mixing with the P, so these mathematically all three add together to get four new orbitals that are called sp3. And those four original electrons go in, and when you fill in the equal energy levels, none of them, none of them will pair. This turns out to have a tetrahedral shape. So uh, this is tetrahedral. And if you drew it, drew all the lobes, it would look something like that, where each one is 109.5, and each lobe has an electron in it. And that's because you see each, each orbital here has one electron. So if you just draw those physically, it will look something like that. Uh, the other way it could hybridize is where just three of them mix to form an sp2. So two of the two p's and one of the two s's mix. The last two p comes over unaffected. So this one right here comes over unaffected. The other three electrons fill in as normal. That sp2 mathematically adds up to have a 120 degree bond angle. So, I kind of drew a trigonal planar on its edge. I draw a trigonal planar on its edge, each with one electron here. And then there's a 2p orbital that I'm going to draw orthogonal to that one, perpendicular. And it has one electron here. The 2p, I'll distinguish it by putting little like hash marks here. Okay. That's the second possible way something that can hybridize. Third possible that we're going to deal with is if one of the two s's and one of the two p's mix to form an sp, and then two of the two p orbitals, this one and the next one over, come in unaffected. They keep their electron. And so now there's two electrons left, one goes in each. This turns out to have 180 degrees, so this one was trigonal planar. And this last one is going to be linear. These are two sp orbitals. I'll label these sp2, these are sp3. Two sp orbitals, orthogonal or at 90 degrees to this, is the first 2p orbital. So here's one of the 2p's. It has an electron in it. It's orthogonal to it. And then orthogonal to both of those on the other Cartesian plane is one coming in and out of the board, which also has an electron in it. That's another 2p. That's kind of the summary of it. Now let me do a different example. <laughs> this is carbon. Okay. Can I erase some of this stuff? Just a quick question. Okay. So, like, according to this, uh, uh -huh. you can form two double bonds, right? The, the last one. This one has the potential to form two two pi bonds, which it would be a triple bond. Mm -hmm. This one, each p orbital can form an additional bond. Has that potential, or it could be unaffected, but usually it'll form a another bond. Okay, can I erase this now? Let's just pick a different atom, just so you can see the difference. By the way, so carbon, its Lewis symbol looks like this. Let's try nitrogen. It has five electrons. One, two, three, four, five. There's its Lewis symbol. 
So if you draw nitrogen, there's a 2s, 2p, it's 2s2, 2p, 2p what? I think it's 2p3. You look at nitrogen on the periodic table, it's 3 over. So it's 2p3. So what happens when you fill it, when you do the sp3, it doesn't have four electrons, it has five. So there's another electron there. One, two, three, four, five, because there's five here. So this pair of electrons is right here. So that's how hybridization explains the nitrogen. You're just adding a 2p and 2s. Yeah, yeah. It's still a sp3 hybridized atom, uh, but there's just more electrons. So this, this figure, these figures always look the same. One thing that changes is the number of electrons. So here, you'd have one more electron here, and here you'd have one more electron down there. Yeah? Wait, so would it fill it SP, SP2, or SP3 orbitals before it fills the 2P? That's right. Her question was, does it fill the hybridized orbitals first? And the answer is yes. Fills the hybridized orbital first before it goes to the 2P. Okay. Uh, so now, examples that we do. If you're ready for that, I'll race some more. Oh, okay. So sp3, sp2, and sp are the only possible combinations of s and p? That's right. Those are the only combinations of s and p. Okay. So the little summary that we did, groups and hybridization. One, two, three, four, five, and six. The one group is not really hybridization, but I just put it in there. That would be an s orbital if you have only one group connected to your atom. If you have two groups, that's an sp, and then we just keep adding p's, sp2, add another p, sp3. Once you get three, it gets full, filled, and so then you start adding d's, sp3d, sp3d2, and you'd go so on and so forth, but in our class we only go up to six groups. Do you have a question? Yeah, um, I know in the last, you had... There was like a third column you started with. Like, it had like, like one sigma and, sigma and one. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And I didn't get all those either. It's it's in the summary flowchart with those sigmas and pi's, but those are the type of bonds, and it's only in a couple categories here. It should say something like sigma. These are sigma bonds. These are sigma and pi bonds, and these are sigma and <laughs> yeah. So for the group, when you're, is this, is that what you use when you like have like a molecule and you see like, oh, there's like two double bonds and then like five single bonds. Yeah, yeah. This is same as Vesper. And then for the triple bonds, it's the two, it's the sigma plus two pi. So every triple bond has two, like you count two pi. Bonds, right? Exactly. If you want to write this. Uh, table in a different way. You could write it like type of bond, si single, double, triple. So just rewriting this. This single bond uh, would be a sigma. Every one of these has a sigma in fact. But when you get to the double bond, that second bond's from a pi, from two p orbitals overlapping. And this, these two extra bonds here are from two pi bonds. So Two sets of 2p orbitals are overlapping. 